Welcome to Psywar. We are the official podcast of the Psychological Operations Regiment. Welcome back. I'm your host, Chris Jurgel, and on this week's episode, we will be discussing SOP in support of counterterrorism operations with two soldiers from the regiment. First, we have a first sergeant from Bravo Company 9th Battalion, First Sergeant Jeffrey. He's been SOP for seven years and has five deployments in the regiment, with his most recent deployment to Afghanistan in support of SODF A. Secondly, we have Chris. He is a staff sergeant who serves in 5th Battalion, and his most recent deployment was to the Philippines. It's, that it's hard to match the VEO's representation because mm-hmm. they're there 24-7. They're already embedded in that village. More than likely, they were already a member of that tribe or that village before. Um, right. And they're there all the time. So like, if, if I'm a normal civilian, like, what is more scary for me? Is it the government that just says once a month, like, hey, don't do that or you'll go to jail? Or is it the VEO that's here watching me 24-7? Um, and it's hard to match that representation. Have you guys seen that or have you experienced that challenge? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Actually, I think that's somewhat of a universal challenge that we that we have to consider. And uh, to address that, um, I know that one of the biggest um, obstacles that we have in PSYOP, and I believe this is whether you're in a tactical team or you're in a regional team, is that continuity piece, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you match your con- the consistent presence of these VEOs? And for us, like one of our one of the solutions that we had is like, well, I mean, who who else is going to be there that's also going to be like constantly, you know, maintaining a presence in that area? And usually, it's law enforcement or other security forces as mm-hmm. well. And that's why um, in the advice and assist piece, we decided to put a heavy focus on, on training up our partner forces because when we're no longer there, they're going to need to continue the work yeah. and they're going to need to have the right skills, the right attitudes and, and, you know, and the right um, mindset in order to maintain the efforts that we had helped them start, right? So I think in order to address the, um, the presence piece, um, you're going to need to work with elements that are also Matching the presence. Right, ma- matching the presence. And at the same that makes, time... That makes a lot of sense. Right. But you augment that by helping them build like networks and alliances that will support their efforts as well. And um, mm-hmm. like Bersarin said, right, getting NGOs involved or a lot of these other agencies that the that that you know that country's government has um, and having them have uh, play a, a role in the entire effort is a big deal. One of the things that we were very fortunate to have was that the president of the Philippines at the time had actually mandated a whole of nation approach to the terrorist problem. So it wasn't hard for us to talk to, you know, other agencies in the Philippines, other like, you know, heads of ministries and stuff and and have them um, at least play some kind of role in disrupting that, um, that radicalization and recruitment piece for the VEOs in the area. So I think, yeah, to, to caveat on that, um, he, he nailed it, right? It's the, we're only going to be there on a short deployment, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's a three-month deployment in support of a Ranger Regiment for us or whether it's, six you months, know, six yeah. months to a year, mm-hmm. uh, that's still short in the long scheme of, like you said, these people mm-hmm. are living that day in and day out with a 24-7 presence from VEOs. So how do we, with the short, short deployment, short continuity, and oftentimes restricted on the U.S. side by some authorities or permissions mm-hmm. because, guess what? using influence is a sensitive thing. Mm-hmm. How do we actually match that, right? I think for me, uh, for SIOP is in general, it's, it's a three-pronged thing. The first is using the persistent engagement indigenous ap- approach that's working by, with, and through a partner force. Mm-hmm. So you're building them up to be able to be trained to the same level you are to execute on behalf of their own nation. And everything you do is with the face of the host nation on it. So they could, people know, and the partner force knows that they're providing their own security. The second thing is making sure that there is a, a, a really good dialogue across all of the elements in the country, that every action has psychological effect, mm-hmm. and that that needs to be anticipated, uh, and it needs to be upfront in the planning. So this organization might go out and do a raid. Mm-hmm. How is that going to affect the longer term right. plan for countering VEOs yeah. and, and supporting the local populace? Uh, you're going to do a kinetic strike. Uh, you're going to do 
a vote, right, an election. All of these things are perceived by the locals and acted upon, and our enemies have a perception of that and will act upon them. So how do we control them to reduce their effectiveness and make sure that everything we're doing is pro the long-term objectives for the country and for the host nation? And then for me, the third, third and probably the most important thing is that is the, the actions speak louder than words. Um, so, you know, making sure that we're not just only there trying to provide messages that sound great and, and these great slug lines or, or slogans that say, hey, this is why you should support the government. We got to back that up with action. Right. And the way you do that is using all of the other capabilities, whether it's civil affairs, it's public affairs, using our SF as a psychological action, right? Mm -hmm. um, our ComCam guys, key leader engagements, providing actual tangible things is going to far outlast when we leave the services and things that we provide it's going to far outlast any any one billboard that might be up mm -hmm. for a month or an advertisement on yeah. television. And then you can do that, like you said, through the NGOs, bringing in the regional partners, right, who are also mm -hmm. invested in these areas. And that, I think, with those three things is how we try to match uh, the extremist narrative. And if we do that well, our narrative will win. No, I, absolutely. And I think that's a, a great point is I, I know a lot of time commanders and just units as a whole um, – will commit actions. They'll, okay, we're going to do a president's patrol in this village, but do they, how often do they stop and think, what is the effect we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. by doing that president's patrol? You know, um, maybe you're trying to push the Taliban or the V, whatever VEO is out of that area. Okay. Um, okay. Well, maybe the effect should be that we're trying to legitimize the partner force that were there to show them that, Hey, we're not scared to go into that valley. We're not scared to do a presence patrol in this area and then mesh that with messaging and products that match that intent. Correct. And when you do those two things together, you can start changing that confirmation bias mm -hmm. um, or you could play into the confirmation bias that they already have. Um, so I think that's something that um, when operations go well, it's because that happened. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and when operations sometimes go bad or the video just comes back in, it's because you didn't message <laughs> properly. Mm -hmm. and I think SOPT is very important, especially when you're countering terrorism, because mm -hmm. as you said, the conditions that are being set before a problem exists mm -hmm. is SOP. Like they're convincing people to support that terrorist organization. Um, so if you're if you're not going to counter that with SOP, then mm -hmm. you know you're not going to be successful yep. because that, that's what started it. If you enjoyed this clip, listen to the whole episode by using your favorite podcast streaming service.